because I get this all emails. It's a frequent question people ask all the time. And any other question about the Akhida? Any other question about the fundamentals of Islam and anything? You don't understand something from the basic, like a shirk, kufr, and the bid'ah, because I'm going to be talking about a bid'ah, because the bid'ah is something like the worst disease. Mm. That's like a hidden stab of a shaitan, hidden stab. Mm. People even don't know that they keep continue doing that. So I'm going to talk about that. Basically, what I don't hear you. Yeah, <coughs> what you're speaking about is basically what I've been seeing since I've been practicing Islam is people into the language without being into the spirit of uh, representing the deen. Like you're saying, a lot of people get shaitan come in. <coughs> My point, uh, my point to come here was to make sure, because the, what I'm teaching you, what I'm telling you, this is a pure. Yeah. This is a pure. Right. Because a la ilaha, there is no ilaha, he's 100%. Because you probably have seen a people who are even saying a la ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah, but still they are relying on some other things. Right. Like they have a maybe, a, a, what do you call that? One? They wear on the neck, they wear something here. Some of them wear uh, rings. Mm -hmm. They rely on different things. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that faith is not pure. Mm -hmm. So we have to totally rely on the column actually, la ilaha, that, that's what it means. We fully 100% believe on Allah and there is no God except one God. And uh, we believe, we promise Allah that we will follow the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now in the second part, I'm going to uh, talk about more about that. Okay. Anybody has a question about shirk, kufr, or the bid'ah? Anything, you want to come here and say something, a few words, anyone? Basically, what you're saying is that if we follow in our shaykh and, and you want to come here? connecting it with what Prophet Muhammad is. Come here, that, that's why I don't want you to eat the food, man. That's the reason I ask you not to eat the food. <laughs> oh, no, I'm eating food, no bother. You got diabetic, they got to eat. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> All right, what's the question? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum. When I'm basically what I was saying yeah, was love. that was, was that um, if a person is believing or practicing uh, uh, this according to uh, uh, a shake from a particular school and they not looking at the other school of thought or the like example that's, that's what? Where, that's like false worship. Like what school? Like Shafi or, or uh, <coughs> uh, uh, Sai Muslim, or, uh, you know, any Sorry, one of those Islam particular Islam. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, <coughs> method, you know, they, uh, is that proper Islam or is it proper, like you said, to uh, the st the, the uh, look at the whole picture? Okay, I'm going to explain something. Muhammad was like it was there are you probably know that as you mentioned about the Jafriya, yeah. right? There's not only Jafriya. I'm sure many of you know that, especially his uh, this brother is from Pakistan. He probably knows like how many sects we have in Pakistan. Okay. Lot of them, lot, lot of, of them, okay. lot yeah. of them, like a division. Yeah. yeah. Everyone following their own scholar. Right. You know that, right? Okay. They have the elders. They start following that. Yeah, that's not. But that's they not are not on the right path. That's right. Because when you label here something, right? Yeah. You're telling yourself. You belong to here. Yeah. And if I say I do not belong to no one except La Ilaha Illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, yeah. that means I'm following the proper teaching. But if I say, okay, wait, I am following, uh, this scholar was passed away like several, like a hundred years ago, mm -hmm. and we started some new teachings, and I'm following that teaching was very perfect, mm -hmm. you're away. Now let me give you an, uh, an ayah in the Quran. There's a beautiful ayah. Let's say in a Surah Ala Imran, in the one, uh, take a seat, brother. And let's say in uh, chapter 3, in a verse number 103, it says, wa That's what it keeps saying. Allah is, Allah is repeated this like three times in the Quran. And also it says in uh, Surah Al Imran, Al Inam, and the verse number is 153. And that's a beautiful verse. I like it. It says, Awad Billahi Imran Shaitan Ajim, Sumla Raman Rahim, Wa Anna Haza Sarata Mustakima, Fatabihu, Wala Tatabu Subul, Fatafarraku Bikum Ansabili. Now there's a hadith in uh, Muslim Ahmad by, by the Sahaba named Jabir. 
and explain the hadith was very, very important. Like for an example, how many of you drive? Who drives a car? You drive, right? Do you drive? Yes. You drive. You're going on a highway. When you're going on a highway, right, you're going to your destination. Let's say you started your destination, and your destination is Jannah. You keep going on a highway. That highway is Quran and Sahih Hadith. Please note this. Quran and Sahih Hadith. And there's also like fabricated Hadith, and there's also Modu Hadith, and like a lot of classifications in Hadith. But you need to stick with that Sahih Hadith. If some psychology tells you to follow this, just say, just make sure this is a Sahih Hadith. It's not something else. And if you're going on a highway, you probably have seen like uh, there's a lot of exits. Exit, right? They're going to the towns and they are going to some big cities and somewhere. And according to Hadith, and the pro let me explain you about the Hadith, what the Hadith says. The Prophet ﷺ was sitting in the ground in uh, sand or something. So he was holding a stick. He drew a straight line on the ground. He said, this is Asrat al-Mustaqim, which is taking you straight to Jannah. Stick here. Do not go right and do not go left. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he make a cross line. So there is one straight line and he make a cross line. Then he said, this is a straight way and there's a ways going left and the right, left and right. The Prophet ﷺ said, stay there. Do not move. Do not make an exit. Do not make an exit. He said on each exit, the shaitan is standing there, calling you, come here. I'm going to teach you Islam. Mm. I'm going to teach you Islam. Now, do you think the shaitan is going to be there with the thorns or something? <laughs> he will come in the form of what? Who to tell, who's going to tell me that? A person. A or, or a sign. A He's going to come in the form of human being. It could be anyone. And if you go in the Pakistan, right, the biggest fitna in the countries like Pakistan is the only country in the world which has the biggest fitna of Islam with there's so many sects in Pakistan. Everyone, they follow in their own scholar. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu means. So let's say what are the shaitan looks like. Each of them will say, okay, I am this group, I am this group, and I am this group, and I'm gonna this group, and if you follow me, I'm gonna teach you something about Islam, which is gonna come make you closer to Allah. Now let me give an example. Let, let's go back in the history of Adam alayhi salam. What did Iblis told Adam? He said the reason Allah is not telling you to eat the food, so you're gonna be among the angels. So he misguided him, but he forgot the first commandment. The first commandment was, do not go there. So the first one was from Allah. The second one was from shaitan. And that's from how did he attack? And like our human beings, we have two ways to shaitan attacks us. The biggest shaitan is over here. We, have, we call it like a devil whispers. Now it will be really hard for any person to identify either what you, he's whispering to you in your mind, how are you gonna identify he is right or he's wrong? Now that's very tough, that's very tough. It's not for a common Muslim to understand if he's wrong or right, unless he has uh, very too much taqwa and he has too much knowledge about Islam. And that's the only person who's gonna survive, uh, very lightly, but still, if you read in a, but let me continue with the hadith first. So, so on all these exits, you will find the shaitan there. Scholar A, scholar B, scholar C, scholar C. You, you probably have seen that they're the biggest scholars and they have a big beards and they have big turbans, like all of them different faces. What are these people doing? There's like a thousands of people following one person. You probably have seen a lot of videos on a YouTube, like people are kissing their hands and they're going on their feet and doing this. So they are, all of them are misguided. So this is how shaitan deceive people, misguide them. Okay. Similarly, we have to stick what we are doing. 
if some scholar come to you, let me teach you, then you come with me and we're going to spend few days and this and that. If you ask me what I'm teaching you, I'm not teaching you something new. I'm teaching you what Quran and Sayyidis teach you. That's what I'm teaching you. I don't have any other book except the Quran. If somebody doesn't have a Quran in his hand, he's teaching you something else, forget it. He's misguiding and he's misguiding other people also. Do not follow him. Do not even do that. You can pick up some good things he's teaching you, just pick up that and leave the other things. But do not follow what he's teaching you. But usually, your own nafs, you know nafs, right? Yeah. Your own inside constraints will mislead you also. Like you're a sinner person, come and go with him, and you're gonna be very pious and this and that. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to do nothing. Just do the way you're living your life. You have to live a life according to the sunnah. That's what the prophecy. <laughs>